Um, so our next question comes from Carolina X Rose, and they say, Hi, Mike. Question regarding the Lord's Supper. I was discussing the Lord's Supper with a Catholic friend following Easter and hadn't realized how differently we viewed it. Protestants believe communion is symbolic, while Catholics believe Christ is physically and spiritually present in the Eucharist. My understanding is that this stems from a disagreement about whether Jesus was speaking literally or metaphorically at the Last Supper. Jesus used a lot of metaphors, but his comparison of bread to his body and wine to his blood was immediately followed by prayer and participation in the act described in that metaphor. I know that when Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches, he didn't subsequently go literally prune a tree. And when he said he was the light of the world, he didn't invite everyone into the dark room with and light a candle. So this made me curious, besides the Lord's Supper, were any of Jesus' other metaphors immediately followed by the physical representation and participation of those metaphors? Thank you so much. I'm trying to think about the metaphors followed by physical. I don't know if we could say there's a parallel there, but but let me explain a couple of things that might help us answer why I don't think that this is uh, literal. Um, mm-hmm. That the that the initial Passover was was not meant to be understood by Jesus or the disciples as a literal transformation of the bread into the body of Christ physically and the and the wine into the blood of Christ at least the um, substance versus the accidents, if you want to borrow from Catholic philosophy and understanding of, of metaphysics and stuff. So, um, all right, here's some things. Uh, this re- this what, what this does, I think we come to the passage with the debate in our head that is this the physical body and blood of Christ? And when we come with that, especially if you come from a Roman Catholic perspective, you're, you're coming with the teaching you've received and you've been told over and over again, this is my body means physically this has actually become. In fact, there are words of invocation in Roman Catholicism. When they say these phrases, the, the, the bread literally physically transforms into the body of Christ. And um, this is anachronism. I'm bringing a doctrine with me into the text. The question I should have is, what does it look like in a first century Jewish context? Not what does it look like in the middle of the 1500s in the Reformation? So when I look at it like that, I see something really interesting. In the Jewish, not the Renaissance European context, but in the Jewish context, Passover itself is a special meal that already has a ton of significance and it's all symbolic. So it was called Passover because it was about that symbolized the angel passing over so they would escape from judgment. They would eat unleavened bread because that symbolized the haste with which the, the Israelites had to flee Egypt. They had to leave in haste. Um, and they didn't have time to leaven the bread and the bitter herbs, they would eat bitter herbs at the meal too. And that represented the bitterness, the taste of the bitter herbs, the bitterness of bondage that they experienced under the Egyptians to remember what God had brought them out of. The lamb rep- represented a sacrificial substitute that they weren't like making. There was no actual angel to pass over them year by year. This was just in commemoration of a previous su- suffering lamb. So the Jewish context, I think, means that Jesus is speaking symbolism. He's offering them a new Passover meal, a new meaning to an old Passover meal. The bread is Jesus' body, the wine is his blood. He's giving them a new covenant. He's showing that he's bringing out a new people through his blood. And there's a new commemoration of that, just like Passover was the commemoration of the founding of the nation of Israel. There's no doctrine in Judaism that the lamb offered becomes the literal flesh of lambs from the first Passover. Like there's no doctrine that says this. There's no, there's, there's no transubstantiation in Passover in the Jewish context. So when Jesus says, this is my body, there, it's, it's, in a, it's in a feast that's steeped in symbolism. Symbolism is the context through which he gives it. So here's, here's more, if I can add more to I think this is a pretty strong argument, actually, against the Roman Catholic view here. Um, another thought is, why didn't the disciples put up a fight? Like, why didn't they even ask? Like, hey, you know, Jesus, eating physical flesh is definitely against Torah. Like, are you sure you want me to do this? And you're like, well, they wouldn't do that because they trusted God. Yeah, but look at the same guy, Peter, who's there at the meal. When when he has the vision, just a vision. It's a vision. It's not even like, like real. Right? He has a vision of the coming down of all these different unclean animals. And God says, kill and eat. And, and Peter says to God, like, no, Lord, <laughs> I've never eaten anything unclean. And yet, this to them would would at least strike that same kind of note and cause them to probably say, hey, wait, Jesus, what do you mean? This is your body? Like literally? This is your body now literally? So I don't think they're thinking transubstantiation because they didn't put up a fight. They saw it as symbolic because it's connected to a meal full of symbolism. 
And there, it brings up other problems like consuming Jesus at the Passover before his sacrifice even took place. Like they're consuming the flesh of Christ. He hasn't even been sacrificed yet. So um, I think that should answer that question, I hope. Yeah. Yeah. Answered about every part of it it could have. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs>